Good morning, church friends, and welcome to FUMC How and our online worship service this week. I'm so glad that you're able to join us and to make the time to worship with us. And I hope that you find this time in worship a meaningful experience. So I just want to give you kind of an update on some things that are going on in the life of the church. Uh, I'm in the sanctuary right now, and you might see behind me that a few things are not working. So if you remember that uh, lightning storm that came through, and you probably do last Sunday night, uh, it kind of knocked out uh, some of our things. So you can see um, the chandeliers are not working. Um, the spotlights on the main stage aren't working. Uh, th this window right here is not working. Um, also, about half of the lights on the cross are not working. It also hit our copier, our internet, um, the computer, and the soundboard here at the church. And we're just finding uh, more and more things almost every day that I'm up here that we are going to have to get looked at and get fixed. And I'm talking with our property insurance people about how to best do that. And so those are some updates about things that are going on here at the church. Uh, uh, I don't think we were hit directly by any lightning, but I know the pole that's on the kind of the south end uh, of the building that supplies our electric, um, something in that line was hit or there was a surge somehow. Two of those three transformers were blown and we had to, uh, Encore came out and replaced those late Monday night. And so uh, whatever surge happened there came through the church, kind of wrecked havoc. And so we're having to go through everything and see what needs to be replaced and fixed. Um, also, uh, we've had the start of school this past week, uh, and also we're kind of being mindful about the number of cases in the county. Um, so far right now, um, you know, th this is recorded a few days before Sunday, and so with the current numbers, we're, we're looking at the active cases. Those are the ones that we're kind of worried about, and also the hospitalizations. How many people are in the hospital because of COVID? Uh, and so right now, the hospitalizations are up. Uh, we used to kind of be under 10 or even around five, and now I think there's over 20 people in the hospital for COVID uh, in the county. Also, um, the active cases are well over 100 now. We've been hovering in that 50 to 75 kind of area, uh, and, and now the trend is going up. And so we're a little concerned of that, but we're going to see how things go. And we know with our current phase where we're at with the two options for worship and with our in-person worship, being socially distanced and with masks required for everyone, we know that there's some precautions in place for people who are coming in person, but it's completely safe for those of you who are joining us online. Um, so we're going to stay right here, and, and I'm not sure with, uh, we're going to see how the county um, reacts to the coming back to school and seeing how many uh, numbers there are. I know major universities that have begun classes are already canceling after the first week or, or moving to all online. Um, and so we're not sure what's going to be happening with the cases here, but we know that there's other hot spots starting because of the end of school. And so we'll be keeping everybody informed about what we're going to do, uh, but we are going to be keep doing this online worship option for a long time, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. And so this will not be going away. Um, so this will be an option no matter what. The thing that will change would be if we offer in-person or not. And so, so just be prayer in prayer for us, be in prayer for kids that are going back to school and for the administration and for all the teachers and people who are making that happen um, during this time. Also be in prayer for us as the church as, as we're kind of going through all these different things about uh, the damage from the storm. And so um, we're, we're lucky that it wasn't worse than it was because we know from our friends from Tom Bean, a lightning strike can be a much worse experience. And so just a few things around the church that need to be fixed um, is a lot better than a burnt sanctuary. And so let us go to the Lord in prayer as we begin our time in worship together. O oh Lord, be with each of us this day, for we have come seeking your guidance and your direction for our lives. So help us recognize the gifts that you have given us and enable us to put these gifts to use in your world. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hey friends, now I want to call you to our time for children, our children's message this morning. So if you have children nearby uh, in your household, I hope that they are close and that they encourage them to get close to the screen so that they can hear and see. But today we are uh, talking about a passage from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, uh, Romans chapter 12. And, and in there, he uses a metaphor. So he, he's describing the church body and how we fit into the church a, a, as a human body. And so he's, he's saying that we are all one body. So just kind of think of yourself, maybe look at your own body and, and, and can see what he's saying is that, that the church is like your body. And so maybe you have some fingers or a hand or an elbow or a foot or a nose or an ear, right? And so each of those are a unique part of your body. But imagine if you had to go through life without a hand or without a foot. And so that's what he's saying is that each person in the church is like a hand or one person's an ear or one person's your chin. And we need everybody in order to be a body, uh, to be a full body. And so what Paul is saying is that's how the church is, that we each have a unique thing. So maybe you uh, know some things that you're really good at so far in life. Uh, and Paul is saying that we all are gifted with something. There's, each, there's something that God has blessed us with that makes us unique and special. And so what Paul is saying is we have to figure that out because oftentimes God uses those things that we're really good at in order to build his kingdom here on earth. And so say, you know, um, say you're really um, good at giving hugs or something like that. Uh, maybe you are gifted with showing love and compassion to somebody. Uh, and so maybe you are that comfort. Maybe you're the heart of a church. Or maybe you're really good with serving. So maybe you like doing mission work and doing, um, you know, doing like picking up around the church or uh, helping somebody in need, maybe carry somebody's groceries from their car or something like that. So maybe you're the hands of the church. And so we each have to figure out what part of the body of the church, which we sometimes call the, the body of Christ, because we each have a unique thing that we can do um, to help God build God's kingdom here on earth. And so I hope that you find that out. Uh, in, you know, some of you might already have figured that out, but you know, a lot of grown-ups still don't have it figured out. So you have some time just in case you're wondering. But we all are uniquely blessed and very special in God's eyes. So let's have a quick prayer before we go, uh, to, for, before we end our time. I, I almost said go back and sit down, but we're not doing that. But let's have a quick prayer before we go and to the next part of our service. But would you pray with me? And I want you guys to repeat after me. Good morning, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for our gifts. Help each of us find our gifts. Amen. Now I'd like to call you to our time of prayer where we lift our joys as well as our concerns up to the Lord. I have no new known prayer concerns that have been given to me prior to, the, uh, prior to this service being recorded and put up. Uh, I'm going to have our current prayer list go over the screen right now and you'll see those people that are on our prayer list. And I hope that you are praying for them every day this week in your own prayers. Uh, but I do want to be especially mindful to uh, praying for our schools and for the reopening. Um, and for the cases of people who are uh, contracted COVID around our county and our nation and world. Um, and also be in prayer for, for just the church right now as, as we're looking to kind of fix all those issues from the lightning strike. Um, but let us go to the Lord in prayer. I will lead us through a pastoral prayer, and then we'll all close with the Lord's prayer together. But let us go to the Lord in prayer. O oh God of every blessing and gift, it is so easy for us to diminish or dismiss those gifts that you have given to us. We have trained ourselves to believe that we are either an expert in a certain area or we know absolutely nothing. There is no in-between. We forget that you have equipped each of us uniquely and blessed us with talents and gifts that can be used to help others. So forgive us, O oh Lord, when we make decisions not to act. 
Forgive us when we don't recognize those gifts that you have given us in our lives. And help each of us to see those blessings, those gifts that you have given to us, those special talents that we each have. Even though they are different, we each have something that can be used for good in this world. So help us to overcome the feeling of not being good enough or not being skilled enough. And be with us, O God, and lead us as your church and as your people. And hear our prayer this day, for we have lifted many prayers up to you. And we lift them in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So our scripture reading today comes from uh, Paul's letter to the Romans, uh, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry and ministering, the teaching and teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of Scripture. Would you pray with me? Lord, take my lips and speak through them, and take our ears and open them so we may hear your word for us, and then take our hearts and our lives and fill them with your love, and guide us so that we may be faithful servants who are grounded in your word and in your love. Amen. So several years ago when I was uh, an associate pastor just getting started into the ministry, uh, one of my main mentors was the senior pastor at First United Methodist Church in Sherman, Texan, uh, Texas. His name was Jim Pledger. He was a great mentor and he taught me a lot of things. Uh, some things to do in ministry, but I think he, he may have taught me just as many things to not do in ministry. But it was just a great relationship, and he was a great mentor. But one thing that I did learn from him, and, and it's one thing that I have kept in my own ministry, is, is knowing your own gifts. Uh, Jim had, had a strong understanding of what his gifts were. Uh, uh, so if, if he knew that he was gifted in a particular area, he took up leadership and, and he went with it. But he also taught me that, you know, sometimes in ministry, um, you know, we may not be equipped or we may not feel like we're equipped to do a particular thing. Because he, he has said, like throughout his ministry, he's been at big churches, he started at smaller churches. And he said, sometimes you're at, you're at a larger church and you have a really specialized and detailed ministry, a very specific role. But other times, uh, you might be at a small church like our church, where whereas the pastor, you have to do a lot of things. You, you kind of have to do everything. Um, uh, you, they call this kind of being a generalist, where you, ha where you have pieces, a small piece of almost everything. But despite whether you're at a large church and you have specific ministry, or you're at a small church and you have a, a very wide um, you know, list of responsibilities, you have to know what you're good at. You have to know your gifts and your graces and your skills. 
uh, because you need to know what you're good at. You need to know what you, what you can do well. But then you also need to know those things that you can get better at and that you, with some attention you can improve. And, and then you could take that from a weakness and turn it into a strength to a particular skill that you have. Uh, and then also one thing that Jim Pledger taught me is that there are some things that, you know, that might be weaknesses or might be skills that you don't have that you can't improve. There's no chance of you ever getting better. And, and he said, uh, in those times, in those things, you hire somebody who is really good at that. Uh, and, and that's one of the things that kind of, that Jim kind of did. Uh, and while I served at First Sherman, uh, one of those things that he kind of, he kind of handed over to other people uh, was pastoral care and, and specifically going on hospital visits to people. Now, I know some pastors have gifts and graces for pastoral care, and I, I personally think that I do. And, you know, I don't have any reservations about going to the hospitals and um, being with people in the time of need, either praying before surgery or visiting them if they're sick in the hospital or at a nursing home. I don't have any problem doing that. But I noticed in my time there that, that Jim didn't like going to the hospital. He, he didn't like, uh, um, you know, the few times I went, he just kind of felt nervous and out of place. Uh, he didn't quite really seem himself. And so um, most of the times he either sent me or he sent one of the other associate pastors to go and visit people. But one day when I went with, with Jim, we had, we had a long time member that was, you know, you know uh, deathly ill and, and actually passed, you know, like maybe a week after this visit. Um, and I found out why he didn't like going to the hospital. Uh, and specifically, it was Wilson and Jones up in Sherman that he didn't like going to. Um, because at this time, TMC was just beginning. It was still a small hospital, just starting, and most people were still going to Wilson and Jones. Um, and so, as I said, there was this longtime member that Jim had this great, uh, you know, a long-time relationship with them, and they were deathly ill, and, and Jim uh, didn't want to hand it off to somebody else. He wanted to go and do it himself. Um, and so I noticed that during the visit, he wasn't quite himself, but then after the visit, as we're walking out those doors, um, you know, he just takes it, he lets out a big breath, and then he was himself again. And so after the visit, when we were driving back to the church, you know, kind of asked him, and, uh, and, and it turned out that Jim all along has considered himself gifted in pastoral care and being with people in times of need. He just hated enclosed spaces. Uh, he was claustrophobic. Uh, and so if you've ever been around Wilson and Jones, you know that those, the hallways are, are tight, a lot of the rooms, unless you're one of the nicer big rooms, there's a lot of rooms that are really tight. Um, also, you park in a parking garage, um, usually unless you find some street parking somewhere. Uh, and then also those old elevators. Uh, Jim would about, about have a heart attack every time he had to get into one of those elevators. Um, so the times when we would go to TMC or go to somebody's house... I would see how awesome Jim was at providing pastoral care, even as a senior pastor of a really big church. Um, but he was a nervous wreck because he was claustrophobic, because he was kind of scared of these small enclosed spaces. And that's why he didn't really like going, and it was just to that specific hospital. But he knew what he was blessed with, and he knew that his gifts for being a pastoral presence in those times was diminished by those small enclosed areas. But we have all been blessed by God with different gifts. We're each uniquely blessed because we're each uniquely uh, a human being who's different from nobody's the same as us. And God has blessed each of us with unique qualities and skills and things that we're good at, gifts and graces. But the main question is, do we know what those are? You know, in my time as a pastor, I've seen many different uh, books that have come out or online tools where people can take a test to um, kind of see what their spiritual gifts are. Um, and I've seen a lot of those, and I don't know for sure how well those really work. Um, you know, but if you do need help finding your spiritual gifts and what you're good at, I would love to guide you through that process but I don't really think those online tools or the books are the best way to start with that. Because generally, we already know what we're good at with, uh, what we're, we are good with. But sometimes we don't see how it can be used in the church or used in ministry. Um, 
But sometimes we do need some help. And the best way to do that is to work through those with somebody else. Uh, because sometimes it's kind of hard for us to see how those gifts, how those talents, how those things that we're good at can be used in ministry for building God's kingdom. But as we start that journey, as we kind of look at what your gifts and graces are, one of the first things we have to understand when finding our gifts and our graces and how we, we can become co-builders, uh, co-creators of God's kingdom here on earth uh, is recognizing that we're all one body. This is what Paul is talking about today in this passage uh, that we read this morning to the church in Rome. He's trying to get the church in Rome to understand that they each have a unique part to play, that together they make up the whole body of Christ, that none of them have to do it themselves, all, they have to do it all of themselves, but we each have a part to play. Now, this image is something that Paul uses often to demonstrate how we are to make up the body of the church, the body of Christ, here and now. Because each of us are a member of or some part of a body. It's, it's kind of what he does quite often. And, and together, we make up a body. But split apart, divided from one another, we are not the body of Christ, the church. Now, Paul was working against some of those worldly forces, some of those evil powers in the world that are trying to, to separate and divide, uh, and, and he's trying to battle against those uh, forces that are trying to, to split the church up and, and basically from its formation. Uh, so Paul was working for unity. The unity of the body of Christ is something that Paul talks about often in his letters and in his sermons throughout uh, the Bible. You know, that's how God wants us to operate, unified with one another. As we see each person as a uniquely gifted child of God who is equipped maybe differently than us, but they are an essential part of the body. Now, there are forces in the world, forces of evil, that work to dismember this body of Christ. They work to get us to see others as others as people who are opposed to us, who people that they are not fellow um, members of the same body of Christ. And Paul warns us in this letter, as he's war warning the Romans, to not be conformed to those beliefs, to not be conformed to the world and how it's thinking and, and how those evil forces are operating that are working to divide us and to see, oh, well, the hand is better than a foot or, or something like that. But we are all supposed to see, even, with the, even, we, even though we might disagree with somebody, as, a, as fellow members of the same body in Christ. This is the first and most important step in understanding how we fit into the body of Christ and how we can build up God's kingdom. So we have to understand that we are just a piece and equal to everybody else. And that they each have their own unique set of gifts that God can use to build his kingdom too. So there are numerous people in the world, just as there are numerous different types of gifts. We each, as I mentioned, are uniquely gifted. And so understandably, it might be hard for us to find out exactly what we can do, exactly how we're gift, gifted. But Paul does mention a few. So we can kind of start there I'm just going to quickly go over each of these and see if maybe you're gifted in these areas. Now, the first one he, um, he mentions is prophecy. And so prophecy refers to being able to speak inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so like the Old Testament prophets, this role sometimes involves being, being woken up by the Spirit to offer some social critiques calling out things that are against God's will and God's way, and calling people to repent and to turn from the evil ways that they are living. It also involves revealing God's plans for the future, uh, both for judgment and for salvation. Uh, and, and all of these things are supposed to be for encouraging us to get back on the path, to, to continue on the path. Um, and so, Maybe you have the gift of prophecy. Maybe the Holy Spirit is telling you to say something about God's will and God's way and how God's kingdom is unfolding. Now, ministry is the second thing that he lists. And in other translations, it's actually service. Uh, the Greek word for this 
is diacona. Or, and so where, it's the word, where the word deacon comes from. So at first, it was used uh, as, as an adjective or a way to describe people who helped those who were in need, like somebody who helped serve food to the hungry. Later, it grew into an, actual, like an official church office, a place within the church that somebody would hold. And some churches still have deacons and people who are serving in that way. But, but really, it's about service. So maybe your uh, gifts for ministry is, is in serving. Now, teaching is the third one. And so this, unlike maybe the other first two, is more self-explanatory. But it refers to imparting the truth of the gospel message to other people. Now, this is, uh, I think, clear for everybody that's a Sunday school teacher or a Bible a study teacher, uh, people who actually teach within the church, but uh, we all have to understand that we teach even when we don't realize it. Just by the way we live our lives, like how we act in the grocery store or how we um, drive on the road. Um, right now, kind of if we wear a mask or not, we are teaching other people if our neighbors matter or not. Now, the next one, the exhorter. Now, this one is not in our normal vocabulary, um, but in other translations, it's uh, translated as encourager. Uh, the Greek word, again, is paraklesis. This generally refers to people who are encouraging other people to live as Jesus taught us to live, to live according to the gospel of Christ. It can be re also referring to people who are just uh, uh, good at bringing comfort to other people, to those people who are in need. <clears throat> Next is giver. So like teacher, kind of self-explanatory. But these are people who are gifted with the ability uh, to share their wealth, whether through their possessions or through food resources or whatever it is, whatever resources you have. If you have plenty, that means being able to share. And so Paul emphasizes all throughout his letters that being generous with what God has blessed us with is something that's very important. And so if you have enough, that means you have enough to share. Now, the next thing, he talks about leadership. So the leader in diligence. So Paul stresses that leaders should lead well and lead with diligence. So in his other letters, he writes, he doesn't specifically talk about pastors or people that are in leadership in the church. Uh, more often than not, he's talking about like how a head of a household leads their household. But it's all about that leadership role. And he talks about how you have to lead well. You have to lead with love, with care, and concern for all of the people that you're leading or that you're entrusted with leading. Not just a group of people, but all people is what Paul stresses here about leadership. Now, the last one is compassionate or people that offer kindness to people that are in need, such as the sick, the poor, the elderly. All throughout the gospel, God is on the side of the outcasts, the poor, the elderly, the immigrant, the widows. All throughout the Bible, God's heart is with those people in need. And so this is obviously something that as, as all Christians are called to do. But there's some people who are particularly gifted uh, to show strength and, uh, or to show mercy, excuse me, to show mercy and compassion to others. It's a strength of theirs to show mercy and compassion. So maybe you have heard something that uh, kind of connects with you and may be a skill, but maybe you're still looking too. And if you need help, I would love to be your guide. Um, but overall, I think the message for this week is that we're not supposed to be conf conforming to the powers of this world. Because sometimes it's the powers of evil. Sometimes masquerading is good. Uh, that are, that's power corrupted by evil that people are following. But we must always be led by God. And we must let God transform us and use our gifts uh, so that we can become a wonderfully made part of the body of Christ. So my friends, let's not be conformed to the world. Let's be transformed by God. 
And may we use our gifts to build God's kingdom. Amen. Thank you again for worshiping with us and joining us for our online worship service. I hope that you found this time as a meaningful worship experience for you. Uh, again, as we close, uh, we are you know, always collecting our offering and receiving our offering. And so if you do online offering, I want to thank you for being faithful there. Also, if you are mailing in things, I want to thank you for doing that as well. Um, just a note about mailing in things. I know there's, um, with what is the post office is now becoming a political battleground and um, because of mail-in voting and the fight over that. And so we have started receiving things late already. So bills, we are getting late. 
Um, so just be mindful if your check is not cashed very quickly. Uh, I know stuff here locally gets processed pretty well, but if it's going off uh, somewhere, usually it's taking quite a bit of time to get here. Um, so if you mail in your check, just be mindful. It might not be cashed for a little while, uh, but just just give us some time to, to, to work through what the post office is going through right now. Um, but also, if, you, if you're normally mailing in your check, I'm usually here in the mornings, Monday through Thursday. So if you just want to drop off the check, uh, you're more, in, more than welcome to do that. But as we close our time together, uh, I want to offer a prayer of benediction and blessing upon our offering today. So would you pray with me? O generous God, you have given us many gifts and drawn us together into Christ's body, the church. You have blessed us with generous and cheerful spirits. So may the gifts of our time, our talents, and our money support the ministry of this church. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you again, my friends, for joining us, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great day. Thank you.